Now, this video is to kind of unlock a mindset that a lot of us have when it comes to the nature of disease, when it comes to viruses, when it comes to healing. And I want to take it back to the reason why our medical industry is in the position that it's in or has the beliefs that it has, because they are beliefs, a majority of them are not facts. And it's based on a battle between two scientists, one named Louis or Louis Pasteur, and the other one named Antoine Béchamp. They are both French scientists, and they pretty much got into a battle around 1878, and it was germ theory versus cellular theory. Now, we have been indoctrinated by Pasteur's germ theory, which essentially means that all germs come from outside, which leaves no responsibility for you, and that there is nothing that can happen to you unless some outside source finds its way in your body via your skin, the way you breathe it in, you touch something, everything leaves it to chance. But when you come to Pierre Bichamp, the amazing, brilliant scientist who had a cellular theory his entire premise is that the disease is based on the terrain, not the germ. The terrain is essentially the environment. What is going on internally that can shift your body from one state to the next? And I say shift because him along with another scientist proved that there is such thing as pleomorphism. Pleomorphic means that these microorganisms are have the ability to shift or to change shape or change exactly who they are based on what your body needs in the moment. Now, Raymond Riff is an American scientist and he did a dope experiment and this hopefully will give somebody hope and by altering the environment and the food supply of certain germs like colon bacillus, he was able to convert those friendly bacteria into pathogenic germs just by changing the environment and the food. Also, he and he, that same colon bacillus, he actually turned it into typhoid, which is highly pathogenic. And he actually did it vice versa. He turned typhoid back into um, the colon bacillus. That was one experiment that he did that you can do some research on. And he also showed that viruses from all diseases can be easily changed from uh, one form to another by means of altering the media upon which they feed. Now, with that information and loan from Raymond Riff and with Antoine Bichamp, we know that we are responsible for the ways that our bodies will manifest certain diseases. Because a lot of times we look at the disease as the sickness, but the disease is really the cure. Now, why would your body want to shift into a viral state? Because the toxemia is overloaded to the point where your body is no longer able to handle it by being in a regular cellular state. So now you have what Bisham called as microzyma. Microzyma are these microorganisms that are immutable, indestructible, and they are all throughout your body. And what's interesting about them he had the ability to show that they remain alive even after an organ tissue dies, even after that person dies. It's kind of a, a spiritual type of organism that will remain after death. It's called microzyma. So bacteria and virus, they did not create your disease. You have a sick system, whether, whether emotionally, physically, or spiritually, or a combination of all three, your system is sick. So now what your body is going to do is it's going to make a virus. Let's say your body makes a virus, and now that virus was created so that it can help you eliminate all of the pollution that's internal. So we have this mindset that viruses and are bad. Now, bacteria, we know that, okay, there's some good, there's some bad. That mindset is shifting, but we always feel like viruses are bad. When you have 10 to 1 bacteria to cells in your body and 10 to 1 um, virus to bacteria, that just goes to show that you have bacteria, protozoa, virus, you have all of these things in your body at all points, whether you are sick or not. And that's one of the reasons why I always tell people that there are certain viruses that I believe that other scientists believe, that my teacher, Dr. Africa, believe you can create within yourself, including the herpes virus. 
Yes, I truly believe that this is a virus that you can create within yourself, not only sexually transmitted. And that's just one of them because of your body's ability to be pleomorphic, to shift from one state to the next due to toxemia. I know this is going to be something that's going to be difficult to resonate with some people, but your body activates the virus to act as a kind of detergent, right? So you have, let's say, the microzyma or whatever name you want to call it, it's a microorganism, but essentially it will activate the virus to act as a kind of detergent, and that's what makes you sick. Now the detergent is activated, now you're sick, but the sickness is there to expel the toxins from your body. So sickness and disease is not what we're supposed to be attacking. We're supposed to be removing the toxicities from the body so that we can have the, sh the cells shift back into their original nature, have the virus shift back into bacteria and so on and so forth because pleomorphism has already been proven. But that is not going to become a prevalent way because to say that the germ theory is incorrect is to deconstruct the entire medical system. That's not going to happen. This is why you have to do your own research. Got your water. Sometimes I talk to my water because water holds memory. So let me tell you what to do. Hydrate me. Love me. Flush all the toxins out of my body. Generate electricity in me so that I may be able to move, but also balance it with magnetism so that I can have my emotions stable. Y'all drinking water? If you have water next to you, take a sip. You feel me? Now, you can look these people up. Bichamp, you know what's crazy? A lot of his information is in French, so it took a lot of translation for me to get some of the information that I got. I have more, which will be in an extended video. But Bichamp is amazing. Pasteur plagiarized a lot of Bichamp's work. And Pasteur essentially says that you can only be infected by things from an outside source. And I could understand that to a certain extent, because when you think of viruses and things of that nature, it's very confusing. But what I like about Bichamp is that he makes us responsible for our own lives. And if we could just manage our diets, which are consistent with our species, if we could just have a fluid balance maintain fluid balance, intake fruits and vegetables every day. A lot of us, we have not had a green this year. We haven't had any fruits. We don't eat fruits daily. If we can maintain that, kind of, that type of balance, Arnold Earhart was also a scientist that believed the same thing. If you create a certain environment in your body, you're invincible, right? And he was somebody that did a lot of fruitarian diets. And we're told that fruits contain too much sugar, contain, your body could handle fruits if your body is clean, and it's going to use fruits as a detergent as well to purge, cleanse, and remove and eliminate any type of waste. Now, when it comes to people catching, catching things all at the same time, for me, and based on the research that I have done, it's not and a, a thing of people passing things to each other it could be a collective reaction to toxicities because if an entire family is sick from something chances are that family is they're all consuming the same things they're all drinking the same things but it could be a collective toxicity to fungal spores different toxins schools buildings things like that but then you also have the energetic components too which can influence people who are within close contact on a daily basis. The human body has a large energy field that radiates six feet beyond us. The heart alone's energy is ridiculous, literally can re radiate six feet outside of your body. And with that, you have an energetic cleansing of people that are next to each other. You can have a planetary cleansing now, one of the main causes of diseases is the breakdown of cell tissue, which is due to uric acid. Where do you find the most uric acid? It's from meat. The breakdown of the protein from the meat forms uric acid, which over time will break down the cell tissue and cause disease. And where will you not find uric acid? 
and vegetables and fresh vegetables and fresh fruits. That's why I always say you need to make sure whether you eat meat or not, that you have fresh fruits and vegetables every day because all protein contains nitrogen and sulfur, which when released in the body combines with water and other matters to de form destructive uric acid. It's going to destroy your cells and tissues. It's going to form destructive uric acid and sulfuric, sulfuric acid. And most people that know about sulfur, you know that when you smell some type of sulfuric acid, that's it smells like rotten eggs. That's what's being released into your body when you have an excess amount of meat. And if no minerals are instantly available, then the nitrogen and sulfur will continue this process because of our lack of minerals. And most of us, we don't have minerals because we're not having fresh fruits, fresh, fresh vegetables. We're not having things that's organic. We're still having milk. We're still having cow milk. Like you having cow milk in 2021, we don't have the enzyme process to break down that milk. We just don't have it. The proteins from the cow milk are way too large and we are not even able to break this down. When certain things are put directly into the blood, we don't have the ability to break it down. That's why making sure that your gut health is strong, that you're not having overly acidic food is important because once something of a large protein like milk or like meat leaks into the bloodstream because of a broken barrier, it's going to become rancid. It's going to rot and putrefy in your blood as if you left meat out on the table for several days. The blood doesn't have any proteolytic enzymes, which is essentially protein dissolving enzymes. All of that process is supposed to be done during the digestive, uh, through the digestive process. But once things start getting into your blood, you're going to have issues. And that is going to bring the pH of your blood down and start, cre start sending you into a level where you're going to have your body transfer from a bacteria to a virus or whatever it needs in that moment to create sickness in order to bring you health because the only cure for what's happening to you when you are toxic is your disease the disease is what's going to heal you the bacteria shift the viral shift these things are what's going to heal you if you can withstand the cleansing process that's the main part. Can you withstand the cleansing, cleansing process? Because some of us were so toxic that we can't, we can't even do a proper cleanse because we might suffocate within our own waste. That is the problem. So we have to take it very slow when we cleanse. We have to start. You don't have to jump into a herbal detox. You just start shifting your diet. Don't have animal product every day. Eliminate dairy. Don't have red meat every single day don't have chicken every day don't have fish every day you have to have days where you are plant-based and i'm not talking about going and getting all this processed crap that still got ingredients that you and i can't read without a biology degree natural foods have natural food days even if you just start with two days a week it's a start but you have to do something because that breakdown of the uric acid is going to break down your tissue and bring you into a disease state that is one of the main causes of disease is the body's breaking down and what are you putting in it to build it back up where are you getting your minerals from every single function in your body is the process is through minerals does your thyroid gland have enough iodine are you hyper or hypo if, if you're one or the other you're probably getting your iodine levels from synthetic sources because if it was some, from something natural like bladder rack help or CMOS, it wouldn't drive you up or down are you getting enough rest are you sleeping at night? Your body don't care about what time it is. It cares about the light. We're light beings. Are you getting rest to the point where you can rebuild these tissues that are breaking down from all of the waste product that you consume on a daily basis? Because if you're not, you will become diseased. And I don't know if you're going to survive that process of cleansing because it is a harsh process. Headaches, vomiting, nausea. And it's worse than that for some people. Some people can't even get out of their bed because all of the waste has to shrink down so tiny to get through your bloodstream. And once it gets into your bloodstream, it starts circulating all over your body and then you start feeling lightheaded, you start feeling dizzy. Can you survive that process? That's why most people stop halfway through the detox because they can't take the healing crisis. It's a healing crisis and it's not a sickness. 
This is your body. This is part of the process of healing is to go through that crisis. But can you survive it? You have to start today. It's an energetic healing. It's not a pandemic. We're healing together. Some of us is going to make it out on the other side and some of us aren't. That's just what it is. But you also have to change your mindset also. Anything you do, whether it's talk to your water, talk to your food, you need to start creating some type of healthy, healthy things that you do on a regular basis. Even if it's talking to your bath water, if you take a bath, water holds memory. Water is able to absorb the frequencies of whatever you're saying because it's a frequency. It can feel the positive and frequency. It's not going to understand the words, but it's going to know the frequency and it's going to know your intention. You have to understand that you are connected with all of these elements. I ain't talking about tap water. I'm talking about natural spring water. If you live near a well and the well isn't contaminated, then you have amazing water. You have to have natural water each, every day. Most of us aren't even drinking a bottle this big when you're supposed to be having at least four of these to start. But because most of us are so severely dehydrated, we need at least a gallon a day. Hydrate me, love me, hold me. I love you. But, the shop, Pasteur, you know who won. You know that there's never going to be a reversal in the overall system because what are you going to do? Just recreate an entire medical system and say that we've been wrong since 1878? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So you either have to believe in your body's two ability to heal itself and that's a hard mind state to come out of. It took me years to get out of that mindset. When I got sick, it took a lot of research and a lot of self-meditation and a lot of going within to truly understand the, the, the capabilities that my body had to reverse disease. You have to talk to yourself. Whether you call it prayer, whether you call it whatever you wanna call it, you need to talk to yourself and you need to talk to yourselves and you need to visualize yourself reversing your healing reversing your disease and going into a state of healing. That's all I wanted to say. My rant is done. Love you. Love and light. Peace, family.